Do you see how radical Jesus is? See how crazy what he calls us to do, what he commands us to do? If anyone would come after me, deny himself, lose himself, find himself in me. It's far more than just calling us to stop cussing or start going to church or start dressing better or stop having premarital sex or start tithing. It's far more than that. Jesus doesn't give us a few rules and say, okay, this is what it truly means to find purpose. Remember, Jesus is not really in the business of making bad men better. He's in the business of making dead men alive. And the only way that we're going to come alive is if we die. And the good news is that it's not really in your hands as far as if you get transferred into the kingdom. It's in his. It's by what he's already done for you and what he will continue to do through you. C.S. Lewis wrote a book called Mere Christianity. I would encourage every one of you guys to read this. If you have read it, you know Lewis is pretty heady, very knowledgeable. Uh, but he wrote this book just to flat out lay out what simple, what is Christianity? What are the basic beliefs? And he says some pretty profound things. And in his last few pages of the book, he comments on the same thing, on losing your life in order to find it. And this is what he says. The more we get what we now call ourselves out of the way and let him take us over, the more truly ourselves we become. Our real selves are waiting for us in him. The more I resist him and try to live on my own, the more I become dominated by my own heredity and upbringing and surrounding and natural desires. In fact, what I so proudly call myself becomes merely the meeting place for trains of events which I never started and I cannot stop. What I call my wishes become merely the desires thrown up by my physical organism or pumped into me by other men's thoughts. It is when I turn to Christ, when I give myself up to his personality, that I finally begin to have a real personality all of my own. Nevertheless, you must not go to Christ for the sake of a new self. As long as your personality is what you're bothering about, you're not going to him at all. What Lewis is saying in that is we don't go to Jesus in hopes that he's going to make us a better us. He's going to make me Brett version 2.0 and now I'm good. Jesus comes to kill us and to raise us up. Jesus comes to kill our old ways to raise us up in his ways. Jesus comes to kill our sin nature and give us a Jesus loving nature. This is the good news of the gospel. Jesus commands us to lose ourself in order to save ourselves, to give our life for his sake and for the gospels. That's radical, and it's scary. It is. I'm not going to lie to you and say it's not scary to see, to see what Jesus commands us and, and calls us to. So I've got to say, how are we going to accomplish this purpose? That probably, if we're honestly facing what Jesus says right now, we're all probably a little bit scared. We're all probably a little bit like, oh, okay. How are we going to accomplish this? First of all, by the power of the Holy Spirit that's working through us and by seeing and trusting and continually being moved by how Jesus suffered for us and has already defeated the only things we have to fear. I'm a firm believer that Anything in your life or my life that we would have to fear, it's pointless. When the Bible chalks up, do not fear all the time, hundreds and hundreds of times, it's not just saying that, hey, don't be controlled by your fear, you know, it's okay. It's saying, we, we literally, if we're in Christ, we have nothing to fear. Because everything that could throw us away from God, our self, our sin, that's been taken care of. It is finished. Jesus meant what he said on the cross. It's already been defeated. This, guys, this is why every week when you come here, I preach the same message. Anybody notice that? Maybe a lot of people don't come because they're like, well, Brett's going to preach about the gospel again and pretty much say the same things just from a different text. Yep. Because the gospel is that important. Because the gospel is the point of everything. Because Jesus is the hero of the entire Bible. So that's why we preach Jesus and the gospel from every text. Because every text is communicating the gospel. 
Furthermore, it's because you need it. It's because I need it. We need to be continually moved by what Jesus has done for us. And that's what's going to bring about true worship. That is what's going to bring about, I'll do anything. I'll go anywhere. I will lose my life. I will lose my identity. I don't care if I'm looked at as other people by cool or by awesome, or by good or by a good pastor. I will do anything, Jesus. Whatever you want me to do, just let's do it. Is anything that I have to be scared of, it's done. My identity, it's in you. My righteousness, you lived it for me. My sin, you took it away. The separation between God, you, you brought me right to him. You made me a son. Because Jesus went to a cross, we know we are loved completely and needlessly. The judge looks at us and says, justified. The world's authority can only kill us. And for us, that's gain. If you are to live a life of purpose, this is my final plea to you. If you, are, if you are to live a life of purpose in following Jesus, it won't feel safe. Your risks will be high. You will undoubtedly suffer and your joy will be full. Come and trust in the king and his cross. Come and follow the king to his cross.